Hello, this is Shri Pradeep Shengupta and welcome to Masterclass Excel. Today we are going to see what recording a macro means, what reproducing a macro means and the in between the sentences, what gets lost in between recording a macro. So basically, I happened to go across some work today helping out a student. So full credit, at least partial credit of today's lecture goes to this person whom I don't know, however, Ima Engineer of Tufts University. However, this big calculator that you can see is widely available on Excel textbooks. So basically we are doing VBA code today and this is all on the sheet. So this is regarding the kick calculator. This is regarding kicks on the football field. So these are projectile motions, which is not the topic of today's lecture. However, we can calculate the hang time. <coughs> Something which says how long the ball stays in the air and the range which is the distance between the starting point of the ball on the ground when it gets the kick and the end point. What footballers are generally bothered about is that the ball should go as high as possible and then have also covered the maximum distance. So we could either maximize the hang time, but a hang time with a low range is of no use. Or we need a function which optimizes the hang time and range based on certain weights. Remember, we can optimize one objective subject to multiple constraints. I hope this is audible. So, in our example, we are optimizing, we are maximizing a simple product, a simple objective, that's the product, which is hang time into range. That's our simple function that we are going to optimize and we are going to find the angle that maximizes the product so since this is a course in introductory excel we are not going into fancy optimization algorithms more so because our objective function is not pretty half a third, it's a unique valued the parameter which is going into the objective function is only the angle that maximizes the product. So a brute force algo will work. This is going to be clear. Why are we doing the macro today? That's another part of the topic. We are doing the macro today because we are going to see the power of the macro especially like if I wanted to fill up if I had these values and I wanted to fill up something involving some fancy calculations based on these values so what I am and simultaneously charted what we are trying to find today is also whether the initial speed it has any effect 
on the angle that maximizes the product. So if a ball is running with an initial speed, whether the speed impacts what should be the optimal angle to maximize our objective. So it's obvious we have to take this speed and paste it here. We'll have to run it. We'll have to we'll get something. We'll definitely get something if I do a copy, if I do a paste. But if I run here I get some range and I get an angle which maximizes it. And I copy it again and I paste or rather I'd paste it again here. I'd change the color. So if I have to do this repetitive task, which is this as a function of this, but not direct or maybe it is not the right time direct, not an explicit function of this. but something derived of a complex procedure which is this which is a sub contained in this VBA button the procedure outlined in this VBA button you must be familiar that in VBA we call a procedure a subroutine or a sub so friends enough said let's go to work So you can see that this chart is, <clears throat> we could create this chart, like I type in initial speed, I type in an angle, I populate the initial speed, like I type in these two values, and then I can just take this on to 96.1. And then I type down this value. I can make this more. More smaller. However, we'll have to understand how small is small. So we really wouldn't have needed this. But let me do it for an extra dash of whatever you call it spikes so let's start with the sub routine contained in run so all 10 f11 opens the vba part of the code as you can see that uh, on that side that this file is named dot xlsm you have to save it that way you also need to go to options and check two things one for the macro developer tab on the main tabs should be enabled and so the developer tab i repeat on the main tab should be enabled most excel sheets don't show the developer tab because it's not enabled and and the add-ins well you don't need much in the add-ins today so and it should be saved as dot xlsm files you'll have to enable macros So let's start it. So Alt F11 opens the macro. If you can see the macro contains a few lines, some which may make appeal to you, some which may be Greek. So this is the 
statement which defines which gives which defines it both declares and gives the name of the subroutine as well as defines the series of actions which will be which will take place on invoking the subroutine or running the subroutine so again why i these are variables will come back to them and what makes us define them later on but then what this code does in brief is it <coughs> selects the sheet on which to operate we have named the sheet interface this which pretty much you could have set cells that since I said it's we have a lot to go to Emma and Guinea and range B dot select and then we have got the value of it, the initial velocity we call it VI, the initial angle which is just one set below so we can see how to how the code goes on the land syntax it selects the sheet and then you select the range or the cell and then active set of value active cell dot value gives you the value of the selection to the initial velocity we go down to the next cell cell below initial speed initial angle to give our initial angle and these are the formulae in projectile physics which will finally give us the it gives us the hang time and the range which is then placed on the data we have also calculated so this is the hang time and this is the range and we have also calculated the objective that is the product we place these on the results how do we do that we select b12 what's in b12 so we are covering some syntactic on VB as well, the more we cover, the more we learn. And so we place it in B12, we go down using the offset statement, which says that hey, go down one row zero column. So we select it and then we change the value. We do it thrice, so we incorporate the product as well. So most of the books are quite sensible as I am. So they don't, they are not quite bothered about the projectile motion, but they want the student to calculate the objective function and to do the optimality search. And our problem with the brute force does, it hardly takes time, it's not visible, so there's no reason for typing out longer codes or to incorporate them from algorithms somewhere on the net so here i have the value i do a brute force optimality search what's that we have to choose something between 0 to 90 degrees and angle so i introduce a step size a step size of 0 0.01 and since there's no sense in optimizing an initial speed with the product of 0 because it will be 0 everywhere so we won't get an extrema through an iterative process so we started from 
zero one and carefully keep it below my bed. So that's it. These are our initial conditions. The first, we have an array of angles from 0 0.01 to 90. So this could be 899. This couldn't be 899 because from 0 0.1 this to we will cover all 90 if this were 1 to 90 and since we are doing the step size of 0 0.01 rather than 1 so we are taking it to 90 and then two more zeros 9000 and so that's basically our the length of our angle vector, the length of our value, which is the objective function vector. And note these have to be double. One very common mistake is that we don't really care about the values. And we'll see something interesting happen. Oh God, this is the interesting thing that's happening, that whenever you are trying to increment this, see, I put in any initial speed, y0.1, 1000, and I see that angle is increasing. And, you know, from 4 to somewhere around 79. The angle has increased, the objective value has increased from say 9 to 79. We can see it's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this has increased obviously. But you can see that my optimality, the algorithm to find that optimality doesn't work. The angle, the objective is changing when I'm increasing the initial angle, but the optimality algorithm is not working. Why? When we are looking at the brute force algorithm, it will be clear. We have initiated the value as 0 because the value at 0 is 0. In fact, we could do this as 0 and we could do this as 9001 and all I would need is one more. That's it. So that is why where I have initialized and now what I've done is one layer of brute force is doing here which is basically a technical point. We need to concentrate on it. We are just saying that look we don't have to sample and then take some samples of the resulting intervals and then do a third layer which happens when you have a large point a large dimensional problem out there so this is a simple brute force no need to think about those problems and we have basically repeated the value function we didn't want to outsource our calculations to a different set of functions so there's what is being done. Note another point that we are doing here. We could have outsourced 
instead of you know to a function or a subroutine a single subroutine which would paste these values to this sheet but well i won't do that because although i am using extra variables i am saving a lot of time because every time vba makes a call back to excel we in principle are losing some time that's it the remaining uh, the remaining is not since we have covered this much here so val i of 1 for everywhere for every i we are setting the next computing the next you know setting the next angle the next value which is the objective function and then we had one g we had a g somewhere here so we said we initially set the j to zero or whatever was the value at zero and now i'm comparing at each stage this holds as we will see here between the two binary values the two values j contains the larger of the two values because whatever if i is not greater than j if this is less than j j is j if value at i value of our objective function in the next table is greater than j then j contains that value and then j is containing the max of the value and m is containing the max of the optimal angle in between the binary the two angles which we are comparing so this is a brute force the base of the brute force algorithm where we are just searching in a linear fashion and j will be image in every search and that's by mathematical induction j will hold the higher of the two values in its search and by mathematical induction the highest value and m will hold the value the value of y which corresponds to the value i mean if we have reached the max then m won't change from the max one we have to think about it. and then we remember where our octave set was we the next is the incrementation which is a two while loop the two while loop used to be one of the most efficient loops in excel the way in which excel used to work i hope that's the case till now we note that our next place is a place below this there's nothing sacrosanct about highlighting our cell just because most of the problems had this i have just happened to highlight this this could be and should be black at least this one this selected region on the sheet so let's not digress so the angle it oops now remember i was talking about the integer versus double so you have to take care of what is what what is short what is integer what is double i have done two things out here so i have done two things here one is reallocating the arrays and defining the arrays the arrays are double which tells them to tells basically vba to allocate double precision
double precision decimals to each element in our arrays and we have defined the size of the arrays so that it will save a lot of running time we have pre-allocated the arrays and again since day's value we had to keep it as an integer uh, as a double because the objective value should have a double precision decimal and our yi is angle so this has to be a double as well right so the angle has to be the angle can be single we don't need a double out there and then we do a see we are getting enough number of you for single so can has to be the angle has to be single right so if we wanted to go down another layer we could have improved the precision 0.0.01 our precision will be 0.01 two digit precision which is okay for our purpose which allows us to be with one layer of root force when we go try to go beyond the two digit precision we are usually we would need another layer of this optimality search another local optimality search because it's a heuristic kind of thing that we are doing here so we have to go and search around the local optimal that we are okay out here and verify well this is the global up not exactly that yeah so because the step size of this it's an optima but on finest so step size we could have another optima it's more like finding an integer approximation and scaling the problem to non integers reals by doing a local search that's what we had to do in a stage 2 if we have to increase the precision this precision does this precision satisfies us so at least me since i am showing the problem out here and that's where we have done we get our maximum angle to Single to two decimal places. Remember our step size. It's not. It's constrained by the step size. And then we paste the value. That's the optimality algorithm. Brute force optimality algorithm. We run this. We get some value well so the question wants us to know how the angle changes with the speed as well and how do we do that well so we have obtained our best angle if I copy this and I paste this here, 
I would get our optimal speed as well. Right, we can't improve beyond this, certainly. Now, going to the second question, we needed this, so we have got our angle. Now the instructor wants us to see whether changing the speed would change the angle. Let this be 100 meter per second. No, it doesn't. But say it does, in some applications it would do beyond the simplistic problem. It would do, it would change. We would need a graph of that to understand how the how the optimal value changes with one of the given initial conditions. So here we come to the second problem. The problem of doing a macro which would make this easy, look easy and how easy it is for some applications. The second thing what a macro does and what a macro doesn't do. We go to the developer, we do a record macro, it will ask us a name, and I name that macro do, I do a control L, and I write some which is I hope the letters are legible. I described that it helps us achieve the input for a graph which lets us achieve. Now these are the projections by value optimization to univariate. We use an univariate and then we can graph it and show a bivariate optimization. And more importantly, it finds us helps us find uh, how one optimal condition changes with a set of others. So this is just to say that such graphs are necessary and here is where a macro comes in handy. So now I am recording the macro. I have this go here I copy the left the value to the left of the cell I go upwards 
and look for the initial speed parameter I paste it into the value that's it I have to do the run I do the run I find the same optimal condition I do a copy I do a paste back here and finally I change the color and then I go down to this step below I go to the developer tab I stop recording this macro and then I come here I see module 3 which gets activated by control 1 but hey what do I see I see that there's a copy and there are a few scrolls which seriously don't matter you can delete it it's just what I have done that it has copied it but look even if I am here all it, it will do is to copy a date because that's there in the macro I'll have to change it also when I scroll below I see that one range is selected but in the next step I'm on B19 why should I select it after I paste some optimal value into it so I have to remove these two also where is our ticker.xlsm which is the routine which we have pasted on the button and the routine we are invoking so these are the things that a macro doesn't record a macro doesn't record when you are invoking another macro pressing some button or going over some figure it does record scrolls and it does not record relative copy copying from a cell relatively for that we have to hard code it here you can see I have a range I've defined a variable as a range I have assigned a value to the variable selection is a system word it says the selection selected range is going to be here the same as active range and then I do the selection by instead of saying something like B18 which fixes it which is basic which is useless for our purpose we do this code which does better and So this chooses the cell which is one column to the left minus one and on the same group. The offset does it. The offset chooses the cell which is one column left of the selection. And then we will be Just so.
Hi, this is Shubhradeep Singh Gupta, and we have just come back on our topic. Sorry for the interruption. There is a sub which is the macro. We have gone into the code of the recorded macro, and today we are discussing what a macro can do for you and what a macro cannot do for you. So we were first showing that the macro can not macro can do most of the work which we have done including some scrolling and stuff but it definitely cannot choose it cannot identify that we have chosen a relative range like offsetting something well our problem was throwing an error out here because when we quit last time because we were on this and there is no column to the left of it. So here we are and it's working. But it seems we are still on the wrong selection. Yeah, it's working fine, but something is not happening right now. We can see it by changing the color. Something is not happening right now. What's not happening right now is control L. Can be seen when I do the control L. I've changed the color. I do the control L. You can see two things. The thing gets pasted and it's coming back. Just because I changed the value of this cell to zero. Or maybe something has space. Control L is not optimizing it, it's simply copying it. So what's the use of pasting this value here unless I can run this app? Well for that you have to do we have to do something saying something where it's pasted out here something before this after the paste in B8 which is basically the initial speed parameter we have to paste something and that is nothing but a call a call to a sub call the kick calc so when we do the call kick calc it should work now Second thing is we can see that it gets pasted here no matter what we are doing.
the similar problem, the extension to what I did here. What is the cell range? Cell range is basically the value where we did the selection. So, currently we are not yet in a position to copy that. This is for something else. I'm sorry for that. Do control Z offset. This will be simply self range dot select. And you can see that here is the code which pastes the value one to the cell where we have the problem because it's pasting in the same it's not pasting relative to where we start from same place so here I do so range dot select and then active sheet dot paste with the selection dot copy which will now work Now I'm pressing the control L. It's working. You can see both the run is getting refreshed and it's working. Hey, we are still want to complete. And why is that so? Why aren't we complete? It's simply because I have to replace an enter every time and then I have to what if I could do it no <clears throat> something that I keep on pressing and it goes down and down and down well it's perfectly possible and we can do it by one more line which is just pushing our range down <coughs> to the next automatically selecting it so that all we have to do is to invoke a macro again and again just before the end width after the end width we have to put this line which will make it much easier Well, proof of these is <coughs> so what happens? I paste control plus L and I just don't press anything, I just keep on pressing it. We see the speed. Two things are happening. If you can see that the graph is also updating itself. So every time I'm pressing the control L, the graph is increasing. And well, we are done. So our graph has been produced. And we can see it's constant everywhere. So that's pretty much it. That's what we a macro can also automate automate the graph. It can automate the graph editing. More on that later. But that's what we wanted to discuss. How to edit a when a macro needs editing, a macro needs editing especially when we are we want to take into account referencing relative referencing because it's something that the macro can't understand a macro needs updating when we are changing the referencing so a good way of thinking about that is to stick to the original macro and then do a couple of offset commands to do this miracle wherever we are here 
doing that a macro cannot do a call another subroutine so we have to do it manually and finally a macro can do everything else when it comes to formatting etc and we have our graph we have our graph uh, let's complete that um, let's pull that down and we are done so our conclusion is that the maximizing angle remains constant for this problem we have done that for pretty large number of points now I am going to add just one more comment and that says that actually that says nothing much it just says that how large is large would would my changing this to 0 0.001 make a lot of change by changing the fragmentality of the speed we are not trying to get into such integrations so if that's given then the step size hardly matters and well we can come to a conclusion that maximizing the size doesn't change so this is Shubhradeep Shangupta, your tutor and founder of Centila and we were exploring the possible some of the limitations of a macro in today's session. Hope you have enjoyed it. Please post your comments and queries on the comment section. Thank you.